In section 6.1, I'm going to discuss the three forms of friction, and we'll do an example with an emphasis on kinetic friction. There are three forms of friction. Friction is a force that is exerted by surfaces on objects that resist the motion of objects along the surface. And there's three forms of friction. Kinetic friction happens when surfaces slide or rub past each other. And we're going to focus on kinetic friction in an example later on in this lecture. In section 6.2, we're going to discuss static friction. Static friction is what happens when there's friction between two surfaces that's strong enough to keep the surfaces from sliding past each other. The third form is called rolling friction, and this is caused when a rolling object deforms or changes its shape um, as the object is moving along the surface. And rolling friction will not be covered in much detail, but it does happen whenever there's an object that is rolling along a surface. Uh, Rolling friction depends on how flexible the object or how flexible the surface is. And generally, we are going to assume that, uh, the, that our objects are rigid, that they don't really change shape, that they're not flexible. And so most of the time, we're going to ignore rolling friction. But it is important to discuss because rolling friction is almost always less than kinetic friction. That's why we take advantage of things like wheels or rollers to move objects. The, uh, the, the point is to reduce the friction between the surfaces. So kinetic and static friction are both caused by the same thing. No matter how smooth you get a surface, all surfaces have these microscopic little hills and valleys. And when they try to move past each other or when they succeed in moving past each other, the hills and valleys sort of catch on each other. And that is the source of friction. That's the reason why we have it. And uh, the smoother that the surface is, the smoother the hills and valleys are and the less friction there will be between two surfaces. So if you think about two surfaces that have very little friction, so maybe like a waxed, a waxed ski on uh, snow or uh, an ice skate on a, on a sheet of ice, uh, they have very smooth surfaces and so uh, there's very little friction. Where something like sandpaper that's very rough that has very large hills and valleys, that's going to cause lots of friction with most surfaces. We're going to discuss kinetic friction in a little bit more detail here. Uh, we're going to continue on with static friction in the next lecture, but here we're going to focus on kinetic friction, which is the friction that occurs when surfaces slide or rub past each other. Here's the equation for kinetic friction. Uh, there's three variables in here, and I'll discuss each of them in turn. The funny symbol that you see there is called a, a lowercase Greek letter mu. It's pronounced like a cow goes mu, and when you write a letter mu, a little bit of penmanship, uh, it, you should make an upstroke and then a lowercase letter u. So in this equation, F sub K the lowercase f stands for the force of friction, and k indicates that we're discussing kinetic friction, is the force of kinetic friction from the surface. It's measured in newtons, just like any other force. And its direction is always opposite motion. So if you have, for example, a box that is sliding along a floor, and the box is sliding to the right, the force of kinetic friction would act parallel to the floor and opposite motion. So that we would draw the arrow to represent the force of kinetic friction acting to the left on the box. The N in the equation stands for normal force, and we've discussed normal force before. Remember that normal force always is exerted normal to the surface of contact. So in my box sliding on a floor example, the normal force would act up. If there's no normal force, there is no friction. However, there can be a normal force without friction. If it's a, if it's a frictionless surface, we can still have a normal force, but we don't need to have friction all the time. Normal force is also measured in newtons, 
And the normal force always acts perpendicular to and away from the surface. Remember, the word normal is in normal force means perpendicular. Mu sub k represents what's called the coefficient of kinetic friction. And we're going to discuss that in a little bit more detail on the next slide. So the coefficient of kinetic friction is a measure of how the roughness of one surface interacts with the roughness of another surface. It depends on the surface materials, on the nature of the surface materials. The rougher the surfaces, the more, uh, the, the, the greater the value of the coefficient of kinetic friction will be between the two surfaces. But it's always associated with a pair of surfaces, not just a single type of surface. In the equation, if we rearrange this for mu sub k for the coefficient of kinetic friction, we end up with the force of kinetic friction divided by the normal force. In this, uh, in this ratio, we have a uh, we have a fraction, and the numerator is measured in newtons. The denominator is measured in newtons. So that means that the units for this quantity, mu sub k, are going to cancel out. And so this is the only example that I can give you for a quantity that we define in, in physics one that is unitless. It does not have a unit that is associated with it. So on positive physics, when you're asked to solve for mu and it asks you for the units of mu, you're going to select that it has no units because it is a ratio. Ratios do not have units.